Hello everyone. In light of our having to postpone our in-person RLS NYC 2022 conference to April the 22nd after the emergence of the Omicron variant of the pandemic, we're running some interviews with our kind sponsors of the event so that we can showcase their thought leadership and to also thank them for their support. Tickets are still available for our in-person conference in April, so please do visit the Artemis website and you can secure your place at the event today. For this one of our virtual event videos, I'm delighted to welcome Brittany Baker, Director of Technical Sales at Cybercube, one of our gold sponsors for the conference. Welcome, Brittany. Great to see you. Thanks. Good to see you as well. So as ever, um, with all of our conferences, we try and sort of keep one eye towards the future of the insurance and securities market. And Cybercube is a specialist in cyber risk modeling, you might guess from the name. But with this being an area of insurance and reinsurance that's often been described as capacity deprived for numerous reasons, Cybercube has the ambition to help unlock ILS capacity to support cyber risk underwriting using its advanced technology and risk models. So that's a really worthwhile target. Um, the capacity is clearly required and it's interesting to understand more about how that can be facilitated in the view of Cybercube. So perhaps to begin, Brittany, we could hear some background from you on Cybercube for our viewers. How has the company developed and, and what is the offering today? Absolutely. So Cybercube was actually born and incubated within Symantec one of the largest global cybersecurity firms in the world. And really, Symantec sat down and looked at the data that they had and realized as much as it was core to their original purpose, that there could and should be other areas that would be uh, interested in it. And so they really settled on the insurance industry. And that is the very quick story of how CyberCube was born. But after that incubation period in 2018, we spun out to be a standalone company so that we could start moving at startup speed and really broaden our horizons. Um, Cybercube is the largest company focused exclusively on providing cyber risk data and analytics to the insurance industry. And that's in terms of both investment and team size. We're at around 150 employees now. And to our offerings, we really touch on the insurance industry at all points in the value chain. So we have our broking manager solution, which is a business development tool that empowers retail and wholesale primary brokers to better advise their clients on how much coverage they should be purchasing and what types of coverage are important to their specific risk profile. Our account manager solution is primarily utilized by primary underwriting teams. It is a single risk underwriting solution that provides aggregate risk scoring, financial loss modeling, and granular cybersecurity data signals to allow for better and more efficient risk triage. And then lastly, and most kind of pertinent to our discussion today is portfolio manager. This is a solution that's made up of three components, a cyber catastrophe model that focuses on systemic events, an attritional loss model that focuses on individual company events, regardless of size, and what we call single point of failure intelligence, which provides data and analytics on the digital supply chain. This solution is utilized by primary and reinsurance carriers, as well as reinsurance brokers, and it's used by risk and exposure management teams, underwriting management teams, and actuarial pricing teams. And it's also being used by groups who are looking to structure ILS transactions. So as I said, that will be kind of the focus of the rest of my discussion here with you today. Great, thank you for that overview. It's very interesting to hear that you're active right the way through the market chain because that's, that's critical really to understand how cyber risk can flow from from the actual threat itself right the way up to the different forms of capital in the structure. And when we think of cyber capacity in the industry today, there, there really has been a clear issue at the reinsurance and retrocessional layers, which is obviously where the ILS market sort of comes into its own historically. Um, but what do you think could make it, could help to make cyber a more attractive place to deploy capital into? Yeah, I think to the point that we both kind of just touched on, being able to look at the risk and the exposure at all values, I think if we were just focusing on the reinsurance piece, we might be missing information that's gleaned from the individual underwriting uh, portion as well. So I think the industry as a whole is trying to better understand cyber risk exposures and how to clearly tie that to risk management practices. 
the groups that I see being successful um, now and in the future are those that are able to communicate a real grasp of how cybersecurity data signals are used in underwriting practices, and then how portfolio level exposures are proactively managed and fed back through that cycle. I think doing that will, will make those groups more attractive to capacity providers. And I think the holy grail is really being able to prove out what really drives differences in expected losses beyond things such as industry and company size. Can we get to a point where you know, the auto liability or workers' compensation markets are in knowing what types of data are truly significant to focus on? Obviously, CyberCube has a view, individual groups have their views, but being able to statistically prove that would be an awesome mechanism to unlock some of those really complex issues. And one thing that I think gets less attention and maybe discussions like this um, or those that I see in, in broader groups is that we can't forget that gathering data on the claim side needs to be better standardized and enhanced. If I don't have granular data in my loss runs, it'll be a lot harder to prove out which cybersecurity data signals have statistical significance when it comes to loss experience across various event types. There's just going to be a lot more noise if we aren't clear on both sides. And from a systemic event standpoint, that is currently boiling down to understanding how technology stacks vary across companies. So just one specific area that we are looking at and that I see a lot of other groups spending more time and attention on lately. Interesting. Yeah, I know it's very, very good to hear how sort of granular you're getting on the data side as well. And, and also interesting to hear about the supply chain sort of cyber analytics angle, because that's um, that's an interesting area that has potential for product development as well on the risk transfer side. But how, how do you feel all of this is going to benefit sort of or provide benefits to the insurance link securities investor base, which is obviously our key sort of audience? Um, do you, it, I mean, I, I know you are working with people on the ILS side of things, but do you, do you expect that as the analytics continually improve, this is going to just help more and more capital come into this segment? I do. I, I'd say with, as with any point in the value chain here, there's still a need for both education and transparency. Not everyone is a cybersecurity expert. So for the generalist, and that could be on the ILS side or, or even on the more traditional insurance side, it might feel a bit overwhelming to understand what these exposures are and how anyone could ever begin to model it. You know, I spend hours with new groups all the time just going into the nitty gritty details. So I think as, as insurance groups are able to better understand them, a more clear narrative will emerge and it'll be easier to demonstrate even to those who again are not cybersecurity experts. I think that will allow us to bridge the gap between the ILS investor base and the insurance industry. I think the ILS investor base will be able to better understand how and where this risk fits into their own strategy and risk tolerance. And right now it just feels like there are too many unknowns for them. Mm. And that word unknown is one of the keys, really, when I speak to ILS investors. It's it's the it's the the lack of understanding, as you say, but also the unknowable. And so um, they are looking for people to put sort of understanding around the risk and help them really put some data and, and give them comfort in it as well. But if we get to that stage and if we can get the investors comfortable with cyber risk um, in, in various forms, Given the scale of cyber exposure across the economy, I mean, have you got any any thoughts for how big an opportunity this could be? How much how much of a benefit could this be to the ILS market in terms of a new category of risk? I think it could be quite large. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to put a number on it right now, but just given the diverse nature of cyber risk perils and the ever increasing interconnectedness of enterprises across various parts of the global economy, I do think it could be quite, quite large. In the past three months, I've had more conversations about trying to unlock the ILS market, again, with either side of the coin, than ever before. So I really do think both sides are, are quite interested in finding out a way to do this. Mm. Yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, you know, it's very hard to put numbers on, but it seems to me that cyber risk at the moment is largely uninsured, really, um, either through through exclusions or just through lack of 
buying in a lot of cases, particularly on the corporate side. I know how difficult buying cyber cover was for me being an online business. Um, so it, it strikes me that this is an enormous opportunity if the correct models and processes can be put around things, around the risks themselves. So finally, what, what's the vision at CyberCube for a cyber ILS market? Is it is it something we're all familiar with? Is it cat bombs and sidecars? Or are we talking something much more bespoke, backed by models, data, perhaps indices, or even parametrics? So I think it'd be naive or even maybe arrogant to say that CyberCube has a definitive vision for the cyber ILS market at this point. As much as we're leading experts in modeling this risk, I think there's a lot of room to continue figuring out how to best bridge the gap between the investors and the traditional insurance industry still. One example, um, when I think about parametrics, for me, there's still only a specific slice of cyber risk in which I can clearly, or in which I can currently see a clear use case that being outage-based cyber perils, such as a large cloud outage. Mm -hmm. For malware or widespread data loss, there isn't such a clear path to having reporting functions that both sides can agree upon at this point. And so I think just due to the nature of that, perhaps it's starting in a way that's more bespoke, um, backed by models like CyberCube, but leaving open to the possibility of moving towards something or moving towards more standardized traditional vehicles in the future. I think starting this way will allow parties to agree on areas where they both feel comfortable and use models to really agree upon event definitions from the actual peril scenarios through the blast zones of an event and on to the actual severity impacts. It just feels like that needs to be the place that we start. One of the leading kind of causes of not having transactions in the past six, 12 months that I've heard personally has been just even agreeing on the definition of the event uh, and how to even begin thinking about it. So that feels like a place where we start and, and potentially as we develop and really agree on the, the analytics and the data underlying it, as we get more of it, potentially moving on to a more traditional space. Yeah, no, I think I think you right at the start there, you said building bridges between the risk and the investors. And that's that's absolutely the key. It's always been important in ILS to to work with the investor base, get them comfortable with something, educate them on the risk, provide them with the tools and the analytics that can support them deploying capital into it. And and the rest will will ultimately follow as the risk becomes better understood. Um, so that's great to hear. Well, look, Brittany, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you at our event in April in New York. Um, for everyone watching, you can still buy tickets for the event. So come along and you'll hear Brittany talking on one of the panels on the day. And we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks again, Brittany. Thank you.